All right, Endeavor science fans, welcome to Project Genotype, and welcome back to school after a nice, long, long, restful April break. It's Mr. Donuts. On the last episode of Mr. Callback's class, you may remember it was Project Copycat. Oh man, I love the Project Copycat. Woohoo! Meow, meow, meow. Right, and kitties copy their cells to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And like all, all living things, kitties, kittens, cats start their lives as one cell. Egg, exactly. All right. Oh, look at that little the fuzzy fuzz. Oh, you're so fuzzy. All right. And then I think we established that there are some organisms. That's how that's how they make new versions of themselves. They just copy themselves. Like if you're one cell big, if you do the old splits. That's how you have offspring, your daughter cells, right? And I showed some other, even some multicellular uh, organisms like these flatworms, they can just copy themselves. Hydra, bud, they do this budding thing. They just copy cells to make new versions of themselves, right? Like you wouldn't say that you had boy and girl hydra, you just have hydra, <laughs> you know? Uh, plants, all kinds of crazy stuff with plants we're gonna talk about later, for sure. Um, so anyway, this is where I want to get to today. So if you just copy yourself, right? If you just copy yourself, we call that asexual reproduction, asexual, a meaning opposite of sexual reproduction and asexual. There, there are lots of advantages. In fact, I would say there are, it's always an advantage. One of the advantage is, you know, exactly where you're going to get. You're going to get the exact genetic copy of what you had. So there's no worrying about things going wrong. Um, likewise, if you survive long enough to copy yourself, chances are good your offspring are gonna survive pretty well because the environment is the same, you know? Um, disadvantages, oh, and another advantage, you don't need to find any other individuals in order to reproduce. Right, that, that's one less thing you have to worry about in your life if you are asexually reproductive. But of course, as you imagine, there are some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages, the biggest one is probably if an environmental change occurs, and we know they occur often, um, your, all of your offspring will be equally vulnerable to the change. So obviously on this planet, copying yourself all the time works a lot, but there were occasions where it didn't work. And so we have uh, another strategy where your offspring do not look exactly like you. And if you go back to Perry the Paramecium, I think you remember that they are one-celled organisms. So they usually just copy themselves and split and you get two, big, two daughter Perrys. However, what we've noticed that Perrys do and a lot of actually other one-celled critters do is before they copy themselves, they find another peri and they trade pieces of DNA and then they copy themselves. So each of the copies is not exactly the same, right? It's like they recombine their genes to get different outcomes in their copies. This, boys and girls, this is the definition of sexual reproduction, sex. <laughs> Who's studying reproduction is excellent. <laughs> so technically, yeah, paramecia reproduce both sexually and asexually, right? Like they, they, they trade genes before they split. So um, yeah, and it's probably an advantage, right? Because I mean, one of the advantages of, of reproducing sexually is that your offspring do not look exactly like you. Now, there's some words that you're going to learn today. Um, probably the most important learn, word to learn today is this word, gamete. Gametes are reproductive cells. Those are the cells that uh, are used for reproduction. If you're one cell big, that's your whole body. But gametes are, are reproductive cells, and they're special reproductive cells in that they only have half of the genes in them. And it kind of makes sense, right? Um, 
because if you wanted to make a new thing, it has to have all the genes. And if you're going to put two cells together, each would have to have half the genes to get to the full set of genes. And then another word that I think I've already given to you, but we'll use a lot, is this word zygote or zygote. And a zygote is uh, the one-celled version of a brand new thing where it has all of the genes it needs to grow up to be a cow, a seahorse, a chicken, whatever it might be. Is this supposed to be some kind of yolk? Right. Now to make gametes, to make gametes, um, you do need specialized cells that do what they're called meiosis, which looks a lot like mitosis, and it's basically exactly the same as mitosis with one big difference, okay? Um, those cells are called gonads, those tissue cells, gonads. Right? So in order to reproduce sexually, you have to have gonads that make gametes through meiosis. Gonads make gametes through meiosis. And meiosis is basically, um, sorry, go, I'll come back, is copy your nucleus once, but then split twice, All right? So you start with one cell, and then when you're done with meiosis, you wind up with four daughter cells. Each cell we call a gamete, and each cell only has half of what you originally had, so, right? See, there's two chromosomes in this original cell. They doubled everything during replication. They split and then split again. Now you have one, two, three. Each, chromosome, each cell has one chromosome, half of the original number. These are called gametes. Right, so a regular cell or a somatic cell has is what we call diploid, two sets of chromosomes. Gamete cells only have one set. All right, meiosis is the process by which you take uh, a cell and you copy once, but split twice, and you wind up with four gametes. And then when you put two gametes together, we call that fertilization, and you get a zygote that has a different combination of genes than either of the two parents, either of the two. That's sexual reproduction. That's, that's you. Now, gametes uh, come in a different couple of different types of, of styles. Most gametes on earth are uh, like just basically the same size. Uh, but what we've noticed is that a lot of species have switched to this a way of making gametes where the, the sizes are different between, the two, between two different types of gametes. And that usually has to do with the development of the offspring, right? If, if the offspring are fairly big, it's really important to have two different sized gametes, usually, um, right? So like a lot of, off, a lot of organisms, right? They, they, grow, they grow up and then they reach the point in their life where they make gametes and then they release the gametes into the environment. The two gametes get together, they grow into a new thing. All right. Plants are super weird and algae and stuff are super weird because, and it's gonna sound weird, but sometimes they release gametes into the environment and then the gametes grow up and become what you would call the plant. And then they release their, uh, we call them gametophytes, they grow up and then they release little cells, spores, usually we call them, that then combine to make a new, a full version of. So it, it, it's weird and to be honest, um, it's really hard to, hard to, to comprehend. Uh, but it happens a lot of plants, okay? Now in the business, for most reproductive organisms, um, gamete size doesn't matter. But for a lot, there, there are two different types of gametes. We call them the small ones and the big ones, the small and the large. Small gametes we usually call sperm. How do you know if it's a sperm? It basically just has a nucleus. Sperm cell, nucleus, small. Large gametes have a nucleus, but then all of the cytoplasm, tons of like, that's all the mitochondria and Golgi and endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes and stuff. We usually call, if you have a gamete that's um, large, we call that an egg. What exactly is going on here? So sperm and egg are just small and large. Now, normally in history of humankind, we have assigned the name male to those who have make the small gametes and female to make um, the large gametes. But as you know, those are just words. 
and they have some other connotations. So I'm just going to use, you got small gamete sperm makers or large gamete egg makers. Okay. To make sperm, you got to do meiosis, right? You copy once, split twice, and you wind up with four spermatozoa, basically four nucleuses, four gametes. To make eggs, you copy once and split twice, but the difference is you don't evenly disperse your cytoplasm. So you wind up with one humongous humongous cell. What do all these cells have in common, these gametes? They only have half of the genes you need to be you. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, anything that reproduces sexually makes gametes. Plants, all plants, all animals, uh, most funguses. I shouldn't say all plants and animals, m most. And then there are a lot of organisms, like a lot of plants, especially even some animals that can go either way. They can do sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. All right, so I'm going to stop there. We've got lots to talk about, plus I'm running on. But um, yeah, Project Genotype.